I'll tell you when it starts in a moment. I don't have the... Glo one of the glorious things about XSplit that Dan uses is you get the option to have uh, all those things updated in real time. But without further ado, welcome to the Grand Championship Series Round 2. Welcome to your man, Theodosios, in the West as OKW on Holodny Firma. This guy is looking strong. He's looking potent. He's looking uh, like he's got a lot of vigour. He's looking great, quite frankly, because he's up against Tobis, and he's 2-0 against um, his United States opposition, playing as the United States also. Uh, he's winning 2-0, he's looking very strong. They're both on Colodny Firma, which is a very different map, different for a variety of reasons. The cutoffs, there's one severe cutoff per side, not two. The, uh, there's a lot more garrisons, there's a lot more avenues for site blockers. And there's a lot more um, going on from an infantry flanking standpoint, quite frankly. Although Crossroads is no slouch in that regard. You'll notice straight away we're going to have a lot of um, denial of green cover from barbed wire from the rear echelons and from reinforced um, barbed wire from the stern pioneers of Theodosios. So uh, good good amount of denial cover there, so it's showing a good strategic setup. Straight away with the Kubelvargen from Theo. We haven't seen that quite yet, so uh, Kubelvargen hype in chat, please. It's always good to see the Kubel. There you go, the rifles get into this shed here, which will allow them to not, well, to get behind it rather, just stopping them from being uh, shot at from that Kubelwagen, which will deny Theo an early manpower win for no loss of his own. Then he's going to go for a second Folks Grenadier as Theo. So it's pretty standard stuff, as we're now getting our first capping done. Some very reverent riflemen getting straight into the church building. As you would expect them to do. That's right. I've seen off Officer Albert with the Kubel hype in chat. That's what I wanted to see, and it happened. So good, good man, good man yourself. If you ever hear it in code, you can actually hear the flag being raised. If you take your camera very close to it, it makes a squeaky noise. And that, by the way, is a flag in 50 FPS, not the 10 FPS you were seeing on the previous cast. Uh, not to troll Dan too much, of course. Third rifle out for Tobis. He's actually floating a little bit of manpower, you'll notice. Um, possibly in the build time of the rifle. I mean, we can't be too hard on him in this case, I guess. I just think his economy could have been a bit tighter there. Waiting for this rifleman to finish capping. Then it's going to duck behind this green cover uh, husk there. And duke it out with those folks going ideas. So we've got an interesting engagement. STG's now joining in the fight against these rifles. They're outmatched possibly. But here come another target. They should really be focusing this folks going to take into account the directionality of the cover. Yeah, there he goes. He's focused him. He's a clever player as Tobis. He's got a good ranking. He's got, done well in tournaments so far. And there you go. Getting a nice kill. And uh, these rifles doing pretty well there as well. Kubelwag and what's that thing up to? Possibly going to take the cutoff. Very sneaky from the Kubel. Gone all the way around the side there. Good. Good folks. Grandi is coming into action. Pushing away the rifles. Getting a kill. Rifles now on negative cover. Stern Pioneer is also doing well. They are getting shot about from all four rifles there. So they have to be a little bit careful. Can't stick out there forever. They are, however, behind medium cover. Kubelwagen's got on the full decap here. Not just the neutralization. The full cap. Now we have the uh, SWS truck coming out for Theo, so let's uh, eagerly anticipate what he's going for next. It'll be interesting. Players do have the option to go both. Uh, mechanised all the battle group, but they have to be careful if they're going for either, because if you go for battle group or it'll keep you out of the vehicle game. Go for mechanised, it may keep you out of the infantry game in terms of health. Nice start finding of the angles by the folks grenadiers. The riflemen react well. Good point, Air Field. My stream title is not accurate. I will uh, take a moment to update that after the stream. Uh, possibly now. I'll try and use some level of uh, microing. Once we notice a lull in activity, I don't want to deprive you guys of any action whatsoever. Possibly looking likely to throw an incendiary, maybe. If he gets the ability to do so, of course, he does need a converted truck. That's for Panzerfaust and for incendiaries. Incendiaries, whatever you want to say. Kubel's going to have to go back home to lick it through. Nice mine goes off. Folks Grenadier going to give chase. Suppress squad. And there you go, boys. The stream title is now accurate. I hope you can enjoy the cast a lot better now. I know I will be able to rest at night 
knowing that that's been fixed. Thank you, Aerofield. Um, and so we've got an interesting engagement here. Green cover for the first grid is they are going to win out over time against these riflemen. It's not going to be able to last too long. Elsewhere, got another engagement. Again, a pitched one. So it's been an interesting firefight so far. It's been a frenzied situation. And here we go. The cutoff is being taken. The victory point is being taken, which will mean fuel denial for the OKW player. Rifleman. Uh, interesting situation. But there you go. The first bundle, bundles, I don't want to say bundle, sorry. Stick grenade goes in, rather, of an incendiary tie, pushing away the rifle, doing good health damage, allowing the car 98s to follow up. Not pick off any models, though, but do a good amount of health damage. We don't have the ambulance up in base quite yet either. So it's not quite been able to work. In the OKW base, we do have the battle group out. So he's playing slow, he's playing steady, he's doing things right. Is Theo yet again? He's waiting until he has critical mass before he pushes. Um, for OKW, for him, that could be any one of many options. Could be until he gets the Luke's out. Could be until he gets the Panther command tank, or indeed a Falschemjäger pop. So he has many options at his disposal. Uh, Tobis is commander choices. Heavy calf, rifle company, and armor. So he has a lot of late game punch should he need it. We'll take this lull in activity to check out the stats also. You'll notice Theo with an incredible KD of nearly three against his opponents. Triple D campaign. Fudge Grenade is going north to take the victory point. And uh, I, I do recommend you that Theo is winning this game. I think his firefights have been in a better capacity so far. I just think he's found cover... Uh, more easily and he's gotten the engagements to be on his terms and it is an FPS uh, simulated game basically it's a modified Quake en engine and all of those bullet shots are sim heavily simulated so you do want to try and get all the engagements to be on your terms you can't treat it like a traditional RTS and he's done that with great vigor in this game here we go though he's using the captain one of the great assets of USF is you get to use the officer corps as an extra capping unit he's able to do that right now so there you go, showing his hand, however, he's going to possibly go in Stuart um, from the captain tier. Elsewhere, he's winning the engagements in the north. So there you go, Tobis starting to show a little bit better map control right now. For everybody tuning in, you are on AE stream. Stuart Saunders has had technical difficulties today with his computer. Uh, Von Ivan's uh, match will be following this one. We've got AE today solo casting this game in particular. This is game three, Theodosios 2-0 up. Looking strong, but Tobis, a great USF player. He's uh, ranked 20 as those guys, and he's he's very good in this tournament so far. He beat Andres um, in round one, and he's found himself in round two as a, a bit of the giant killer. It's SDG's pop with great timing. They are getting gunned down, though. There you go, a two-man squad retreating on low health. No ambulance up in base. Um, so he's not been able to field these guys with as much health as they should have. Absolutely my pleasure. Whoever just said thank you for the cast. This is the Grand Championship Series, the tournament. I've worked very hard to organise and Dan's worked very hard as well. We've had a lot of guys helping out. Quasar, Jubi Hooligan, Kurahi. Uh, and it's an absolute pleasure to cast for this for you today. I couldn't think of anything better that I'd rather do, quite frankly. It's uh, one of the greatest pleasures you can have is casting high-level company of heroes because it's quite frankly beautiful to watch. And I've been casting it for many years now and to me it's like, uh, it's like riding a bike. I can just jump in into it. As long as I have some warm-up casts, I can get straight back into it. Um, these rifles got difficult tree path. Oh, the Stuart is there to shield. The M5A1 Stuart light tank. A fearsome competitor for all of this OKW infantry to worry about, quite frankly. There we go, Kubel capping in the south. The folks Grandies are pushing out. What a competitive game we've got in this round two, game three. You wouldn't think this series was currently being won by Theodosios 2-0, but it is, and he's doing very well. Roquetteverf are getting into position. They're reversing as fast as they can go. They jump into the garrison. They will not, however, be able to get a shot off. If they could, it would have been, uh, quite frankly, shot of the century. Two rifle squads come into picture, but great predictive uh, incendiary nade from Theo. Denies cover. The stern pioneers come in, and the, quite frankly, that's great because that now allows this this uh, um ease 
to keep the Stuart away, and the Stern Pioneers can win the engagement thanks to the departing Fox Grenadiers. Oh, I spoke a little bit too soon, but it was still a great play. Elsewhere in the south, you've got an engagement with the uh, captain. He's just updated the Zook, though. Great upgrade. Will he be able to get the kill on the Kubel? He doesn't fancy it because, quite frankly, the Fox Grenadiers protected the Light Scout vehicle. Nice shot from the Rocket, and finally sh uh, choosing its moments to prove its worth. Here you go, the Schwer Panzer headquarters is now being built, or rather the truck that will inevitably become that tr uh, vehicle is on the f will be on the field. Blow torches at the handy, that's uh, what Dan Hobden looks like right now, trying to stop his CPU from only going at 0.8 megahertz, because that is literally what is happening. Or possibly 80, 80 megahertz, it's something scandalously low. He's got the, uh, the rare i7 underclocking option that uh, I've never heard of existing, but apparently he's got that. So that's why you're on my stream today. Folks, Granny is capping up this vital fuel point in the south. Theo looking strong. Let's have a little look at the tack map. Or, as Loveness knows it, Company of Heroes 2. Um, it's, it is getting swallowed up by red. You've got a lot of activity in base at the moment for Tobus as he repairs his army. But here we go. Here comes the cavalry. Bars uh, are now fielding as well. So this first unit is going to have to get the hell out of dodge very shortly. And there you go. Negative cover on the retreat. It's going to be difficult to get out of there. Elsewhere, the Stuart is coming up against uh, heavy resistance. But it's all targets it can tango with. And the USF are able to cap up the south side of the map. M. Gay. Can't say. Uh, Dreisein und Fear? Fear und Dreisein? Eins, zwei, drei. It, was it Fear und Dreisein? Honestly, I got an E at GCSE German. So, uh, it's definitely the MG34 in English, though. And there you go, there's the inevitable Schwerpanzer. It's now up, so we've got multiple options at his disposal. His fuel counts, however, only 34, having gone for the heavy structure. Um, so, possibly an orbital dart to be built, I would imagine. Oh! Just had the uh, Kubelwagen go off. There it goes. It died to these uh, Zooks from the captain in the north. V und 30. Thank you, Scout Knife 23Z, for correcting my scandalously terrible German. Rakat and Werther being pushed up. Into good territory. And uh, Theo's looking strong, man. He's he's not looked overwhelmingly strong against Tobis, even if this uh, series were to uh, end up as a 3 0 match. It's definitely not a 3 0 stomp. Um, because Tobis has been strong, he's been powerful, he's been potent. And it's been a good series, to be honest. Um, regardless of uh, Theo looking strong in, in this game three, looking likely if Tobis doesn't pull something big out um, to to possibly gun down his opponent and beat him into submission with a giant porcelain uh, phallus like the Clockwork Orange. Nice incendiary nade on point with the incendiary nades all game long. I mean, denying him heavy cover. Didn't quite work out in this situation, but all the time it does give him superior um, maneuverability to do stuff like do mass retreats. Another MG being built just to keep the US forces further back. Superior victory point control yielded for Tobis. Still on that victory, uh, so superior KD, although Tobis has closed the, back, the gap a little bit. Sturm Gewehrs doing what they do best, the prototype type. Assault rifles, good kills in the rear echelon squads, all kinds of issues. Fun fact about rear echelons, in the early um, Western Front Army's Alpha, um, they were actually had African-American squad mates and African-American voice lines, um, which would have been historically accurate that uh, African-Americans were given a rear guard duty. But uh, Relic uh, possibly wisely decided against it at the last moment for fear of obviously being... Um, you know, given a racist title. But you've got to consider in all historical movies, for example, Vietnamese movies, you've always got the poor black guys given uh, latrine duty and such, because obviously uh, that kind of era of America was a little bit politically skewed. So it's an interesting, interesting fact, and I, it's one of those decisions, were they right, were they wrong? Uh, you know, that was just a fun fact of how they were building up the, the rear echelons at one point. Sturm 
Pioneers possibly being gunned down by bars here. Got to get the hell out of there. Oh, here comes the Fausto. He's going to be going for it. That is a poorly health Stuart. The Panzer Fist. Finding the Stuart. Going to keep it out of action for a good while. Captain absolutely keeping the US forces in the battle here in the north here as the buildings asunder thanks to more incendiary nades from Theodosios. He spent most of his munitions on those things. Interesting pick from Tobis. He's gone for Rifle Company. And look at Theodosios with the superior map control, constantly denying his opponent cutoffs. But um, he does have the fuel count to get those easy eights on the field. The upgun Shermans. There you go, the Stuart's now repaired. However, the Rakettenwerf is lying in wait. Will it get a shot off? He's going to wait for the Faust. He gets it. Here comes the Rakettenwerfer. Possibly going to make mincemeat of this light vehicle. There you go. Another shot required, possibly. Not going to get out of that uh, line of sight. Second shot to come in. Destroys the Stuart. Great work from Theo. Proving his fifth seed. For the first time in this tournament, in my mind, in this game, he's really looked strong. And this is what we expected him to do. This is why he was given fifth seed. And all of the practice games in the build-up to GCS, he was looking very good. And um, this game has really showed his potential as a strong competitor in this tournament, in my mind. Because Tobis has played well, but Theo has just played better. He's played better than well. He's played excellently. And uh, it's what you want to see in a Grand Championship Series. That's why we've had this big kickstart. That's why we've had a massive tournament such as this one. We want, quite frankly, um, as much high-level play as we can get. And we want to keep elevating it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And when you see those big boys on that stage... That sounds terrible. <laughs> when you see those great players on that stage on the 1st of July, and you see a best of seven series at the zenith of Company Heroes 2, you'll know why all of this GCS was worthwhile. It's going to be absolutely awesome. There will be details of the live event being released um, in the coming days. Here we go, though. He's unleashed the wise phosphorus to get rid of this um, MG. He's pushing up with the captain. And the board up. Vet 3 rifle. This uh, Vet 4 folks can already won't be able to stay in there for too long. And he wisely retreats. Tail between his legs. We've got a Panzer Fear being built for Theo. However, the map is clearly in, th in her, his uh, favour. There you go. Medium tank on the field. The armoured skirts. A late war variant. The Alf. Yup. Folks coming here. Absolutely marauding around the map. Colodney Firma is not one of those maps that's linear. It's got so many avenues to flank and to constantly cause your opponent problems. If you have superior micro and you're more active, you can really like turn the screw on your opponent's thumb and just stop him getting back into it. Rifles being pushed away. The NA player. Playing as USF, looking in a weak position at the moment. He's having to get the M1 AT gun out just to contend. He doesn't have the sanctity, quite frankly, of the late game Pershing. And I, I don't understand at this point why he's gone for um, Rifle Company. I mean, we have seen the White Phosphorus, but that's all we've seen. And there you go, the Panther Command Tank is now an option. Nurja Hadeen 54 saying OKW strongest faction right now. Not in GCS, quite frankly. Um, the current factional pick stats go Soviets, then Wehrmacht. But they definitely are strong in general. Oh, and there you go. Nearly thrown in the towel, but it was just my game spluttering. <laughs> I have got Skype open and stuff. I possibly need to close that. There we go, close that. I won't close Discord now, just in case Dan comes back on the scene. A little bit of ram needed. Oh, look at this. These Vet 5 folks currently just pushing up. Giving serious problems to his opponents. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Got that up on the wrong, wrong window, clearly. That's the way I see if there's any FPS drops. No, it should be okay at the moment. Just momentarily whilst my game was spluttering. Stern Pioneers behind heavy cover. These guys have got 10 kills. That's right, the worker unit have 10 kills. Folks, currently is 24 kills on that Vet 5 squad. 
Those guys are absolute machines. Panzer Fear just pushing up, pushing in, and creating serious problems. Interesting stats from Blue Wolf in chat. The uh, Panzer Fear yacht, uh, downgraded Panzer Fear. It's more pushed towards mass production in the late war for the uh, Wehrmacht. Uh, because obviously that's what they should have done all the while. They should have always focused on mass production. But if you notice, they got all the way to the letter J in the variants. Um, I, I think the Soviets possibly had a hell of a lot less variants for the T-34. You know, famously, mostly just the 76 variant and the 85. They had none of these letters. So this vehicle with this hideous camouflage. Schumann just to cause further cause problems if Toby's even dared to break out of the Kessel. However, we now do have the Sherman medium tank on the field. That is not the uh, Easy 8 variant. That's the usual variant. Let's have a little look at that. Destroying fences, and that's pretty much all it's going to be able to destroy in this map at this rate. Also, not a good target for Shermans, though. Do lose a very expensive model there. Oh, look at that health damage! That's all uh, Tobis has going for him, quite frankly. It does look like he is out of GCS. Attacking ground from the Panzer Fear. The Sherman's in a difficult situation, but the M1 setting up to thwart. Kuba with some great stats about the 76 variant. It did have three variations. But I think my point about the Germans having more variations overall definitely holds true if you were to Wikipedia any of those tanks. Is the Germans kept iterating and they kept uh, changing. They also had the Panzer III, which was meant as the anti-vehicle variant, and the Panzer IV, which was originally meant as the anti-infantry the anti variant. That's why it had a stub nose in the first uh, few letters of the alphabet. It's... Uh, very little difference in the overall weight of those two vehicles. Just interesting to me that we've never seen the Panzer III in uh, Company of Heroes. Not even Company of Heroes 1. Mine finally goes off, nearly destroys the captain. Will he even stick out to cap that thing? He has to. Because he's just looking so weak at the moment. Another great point about uh, Wehrmacht uh, versus, well, the Nazis, let's face it. The Nazi Germans versus the Soviet Union as the Sherman gets taken out by the Raketten. To add further insult to injury from Theo is, and there you go, just to talk about this series. We've just seen a fantastic win for Theo. He's done fantastically against Tobis, who, in my opinion, was not playing badly uh, whatsoever. So great, great series. Um, what do you think about that, Dan? Oh, I thought it was all right, to be honest, Dan. I thought my computer could have handled things better. Yeah, that's a great point. Your computer could have been better. But I thought Theo just had too much to, to for Tobis to handle, quite frankly. Yeah, good point. Too much to handle. Great point there, Dan. Um, so this isn't just a, a, a bizarre ventriloquist act. This is also a, a competitive tournament. And uh, we now see... Oh, God, that's the wrong one. We now see... That's right. Let me just get the brackets up for you. 3-0 for Theodosios as he goes in to the second, sorry, the third round of the quarterfinals. Looks likely set to play on the 3rd of June. That's right, so we're currently on the 7th of May. He's got a bit of a wait, but that's because we're trying to make sure everybody can see every single game of this tournament. And that's exactly what we want to happen. And it's exactly what we should see happening. And uh, hopefully you, you appreciate you'll get your full bang for your buck in terms of entertainment value. I think we will go back to the Dan Hobden screen. Uh, sorry, the Stormless screen there. He's looking absolutely uh, wonderful. Waiting to see if we're getting any message from him. See if he's around. Currently offline. Hopefully he's not run away or anything. Um, but yes, that was a great series. That was, as I've just mentioned, um, Theo winning 3-0. As a quick recap, uh, it was against Tobis' USF twice. He won once as Wehrmacht, once as OKW. And then he himself won as United States Forces. Um, the other series we have for you today, just to go over to the brackets once more, is von 